This week we're hunting the elusive bucks of western Montana at my cabin in the Kootenai National Forest. Kootenai National Forest is 2.2 million acres. It goes all the way up to the border of Idaho and all the way north to the border of British Columbia in the western corner of Montana. Some of the woods here are thick. This was the clear cut capital of the world back in the 80s. And since then, they've really shut the timber down. Being in the National Forest that's this large that has various species and has excellent whitetail hunting is my favorite place to hunt whitetails. The best way to hunt in this environment is the focus on funnels. The funnel is any sort of transition or pathway in which the animals feel comfortable moving from one area to another. For example, sometimes there can be a fence line and the fence is down in just one area and the animals will consistently funnel to that area. Sometimes it's in a creek bottom, which is what I prefer, where the animals go from bedding areas and they can transition through and they can stay within thick cover where they feel secure and move up into the mountains, which is what we have here. Whether you're gonna hunt in an agricultural area, an area near a city, or an area like this that is wilderness, animals will use funnels. And in my opinion, that's the way to get your animal. Our first morning out, it started snowing. We get set up, I get my tampons out, put my pee up. So my strategy today is I'm gonna stay along this creek if we spook anything, we're gonna push them that way. We're gonna loop around and catch on the other side. And then we're gonna do a figure eight back. And then we're gonna go up the mountain if we don't have any success down here in the creek bottom. We're not sitting there for more than two seconds before, bam, a buck comes out. And I mean, it looks like a painting and the, the snow's falling on it. And you know, he kind of looks over at us. There are about 10 different times we could have shot him. And I mean, at close range, we could have shot him with a bow. And he kind of looked at us and thought, there's something wrong with those two idiots that are under that tree. And he walked off, never saw him again. I think if he hadn't maybe been suspicious of us, he would have walked right up and smelled that damn If you're looking for a real experience, you really want to hunt in a wild place, you want a lot of country to yourself, and you want to see a lot of cool stuff, now this is the hunt. That doe that came out, she was an asterisk, she stood there and peed. She went back in the woods, two bucks that have come out, two different ones, they've smelled the area and they've got to run back after her. We're gonna go down here and circle around. Now there's good snow and bad snow. There's crunchy snow, which will kill you. It's like walking on cornflakes. You got crunchy, frozen ground. Man, you're not gonna sneak up on anything. You just need to get into an area as early as you can and just sit down and hopefully some new deer are gonna come through. This is one of the best places I've found for calling in deer because the ratio between bucks and does, oh, it's awesome. We see buck, then another buck, then does, then does, and does. And we see total 18 to 21 deer our first morning. Now some of the bucks that come out are really nice, you know? They're not huge, but they're pretty beautiful deer. I let these deer walk because it was the first day. I don't really want to kill a deer my first morning. Even if it's a monster buck in a, in a sick way, I hope I don't see a monster buck on the first day. Because then my, you know, my hunting trip's over. Now, I'm not the king of restraint. <laughs> and if anyone's watched my shows, you'll know. God, like I love, you know, a, a big animal, that's wonderful. But Huntley likes to uh, hunt. There he is, there he is, there he is. I made the decision that if this buck gives me a shot, I'm gonna shoot him. 